hear me out, why do you focus only on parkour? Because a lot of parkour gyms are not doing just parkour. They're doing like aerial silks and break dancing or CrossFit and parkour, one of the things they offer. Let me expand a little bit. At parkour.com, we now have a, a list of all the parkour gyms in the, in, in the world and we're missing a lot of them. But whenever we find new gyms, we add it. And one of the questions I came about when creating this list was, if there's a parkour gym that offers, if there's a, sorry, if there's a gymnastics gym that offers parkour classes, do we put them on the list? And my answer was no, because it's not a parkour gym. You're, you're offering classes. Now, if someone knows like their company is that we offer parkour classes and we teach classes outside, I think I put, I think I found one of those and I put them on the list because I was like, they're a, a parkour focused company. They just don't have a facility yet. So I'm not going to dock them for that. But if parkour is just this thing that you kind of do, I was like, I'm not interested in that. Like, I'm interested in the people that are, we do parkour. Now, that being said, if you're apex movement or something like that, and parkour is your focus, but then you also have breakdancing or something, it's like, that's fine too. You can be on the site. But what stood out to me is when you said, we do parkour. That's what we do. We don't offer other things. We don't want to offer other things. We're focusing on our core competency, which is teaching parkour. How did you arrive at that conclusion? And how do you see yourself compared? And I know you don't compare yourself in some ways to other gyms that aren't doing that. Yeah. Um, so I, I forget the quote specifically, but I'll, I'll try to botch it real quick. There, there's one of like, you know, would you rather dig a million holes that are, in, that are a foot deep or would you rather dig one hole that's a million feet deep? You know, like which one, which one's a sicker hole, <laughs> you know, what, what, which hole fills in more stuff. Um, and so for parkour, for us, like we, frankly, in the past, we did have a different company come in and do aerial silks. We did do tricking. We did do like a class that was like, this is tumbling the class. Um, so we, we have in the past, but again, this is in the era where we didn't even know our target audience. We hadn't like come up with like a really thought out curriculum yet um, because we were, we we're taking a step forward in like multiple different directions, you know, like all these different directions, one step, instead of just consolidating it all into one direction and having all of our steps forward be in that one direction. And now we're like a mile ahead on the trail, you know, as, whereas before we only took one step ahead on, on a thousand different trails. Um, so Anyway, that, that's the metaphor that I, that I botched, but it makes sense to me. And so when you bring it back to like how it shows up in reality, um, like parkour is frankly hard to teach really well. It's easy to teach like in a shallow sense, like, hey, kid, jump over this box. That's, that's easy, you know, but there's a reason why the barrier to entry to a successful parkour gym is very high. There's a reason why if there's just some like money tycoon watching this podcast who wants to open up next door to me and rip us off, there's a reason why I'm actually not afraid of that at all, because it's really difficult to create a parkour curriculum that doesn't just teach parkour, but gets people like the life lesson of it, gets people the, the like connection, the community of it. And it gives to parents like all of those things to keep the kid interested so that they don't quit in like three months, which is the biggest boon or a bane of a parent when they put their kid in soccer and then they quit, let's try basketball. And then they quit, you know, there's reasons why kids quit. Um, and it's not just because they're kids, you know? Uh, so creating that environment and creating that for the, for the audience, but also creating that for your club, for your coaches and for your whole team so that everyone is like focused on the same thing, moving forward and pouring in their own creative thought and their value day after day, that is hard. And if I tried to do that for like tricking a sport that I know almost nothing about, or like aerial silks, a sport that I know almost nothing about, like I could hire people to do that, but they would just be doing that one class that one day, you know, or I could build a bunch of trampolines and like have a trampoline class and the kids would think that's sick, but like I can monetarily, I can fill up the space with parkour classes anyway. So there's not an opportunity lost but also like I don't personally care about trampoline like trampolines are fun but like I'm not trying to change a million people's lives through the power of trampoline like it, it's just not me and I think it's someone else's mission someone else's totally mission. cool 
<laughs> it's totally cool if you want to change someone's life for the art of like underwater hip hop, like go for it, but it's go just not it, what man. I do. Uh, and I, and I know parkour, I know how it changed my life. I know how it changed a lot of people's lives around me. And that's what I'm trying to inspire in other people. And I can't do that if I'm distracted.